All right, all right. Welcome to another episode of Only Comics. I'm Mike. This is Adrian. Good morning. Good morning. What's up, bro? Uh, another beautiful day. Another day above ground. It, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. We had a little, we had a little warmer weather this weekend. Yep. Yep. I got I got some gardening done, Adrian. Uh, yeah, I love it. I'm I'm in the backyard too, dude. Uh, yeah, yeah. My body's not agreeing with all those decisions, but <laughs> no, hey, that's no. the way it works. Well, you said earlier, it's the healing factor. Ah, it's that's just, it. That's it. I that's think it. you know, as you get a little older, it slows down, yeah, but yeah. it still works. It's, it's like uh, Logan, right? You yeah. Know, you get a little older, things yep. little, kind of slow down a little bit, but it's working. It's definitely still working. But yeah, dude, I was out there like, you know how they they um as you call them, they, what they change gender of characters. Right, right. I was like the male poison ivy out there, dude. I was planting <laughs> shit everywhere, nice. bro. Yeah, nice, nice. so it's another mutant power of mine. Uh, I discovered. It, it's, yeah, what is it called? Green thumb. Green thumb. <laughs> I didn't even have to buy any plants, dude. I was just throwing shit down. It was popping right nice, up. Nice. At least that's how it looked afterwards. But anyway, um, another, another show here we got for you guys. We got um, we're gonna hop right into the news, Adrian. We we had Let's a couple it. episodes of X Men '97 to go through today, right? Because yep. you were traveling through the multiverse a little bit. You're back right, now, right? right? Back, back. You came back with some some new toys here. Yeah, yeah. There you Ooh, go. Look at little, this little Iron Man thing going on. It ain't little, dude. It's heavy too. Yeah, it yeah, weighs it like 160 pounds. <laughs> you right. That's crazy. Um, but anyways, so in the news, um, X-Men 97, it's so funny, dude. Bo DeMaio is, like, the biggest promoter of X-Men 97. I've never had someone that, like, I fired and then helped promote the company. You know, it's crazy. Well, what it does is it, it lets people know what he did. Mm -hmm. So he's, yeah. he's actually promoting himself, which Oh, he's is taking cool. credit. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, yeah. I mean, which is cool. I mean, and he should. Yep. I mean, these, this, um, this first season I, I guess is like it's awesome dude it is um i had doubts before but now yeah. i am fully in yeah um and it's, it's amazing so he's promoting himself which is what he should do mm -hmm. he, dude he's doing a better job of promoting the x-men show than marvel you know they don't even need marvel to promote it exactly, exactly. that's okay <laughs> yeah but to your point dude this show it has been amazing yeah i I definitely, I don't want to say I had high hopes, but I, w I definitely was excited about it, but I didn't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. And it has, it superseded my expectations. Absolutely. It's phenomenal so far. But he's been um, giving out some homework assignments. I think he's watching us too. Okay. Because if you remember, before this show started, I was giving out homework assignments. Mm -hmm. I was saying, you know, watch this episode from next. Right. So he's copying me. <laughs> and he, or maybe he was influenced by me. You know? uh, maybe. Let's, let's go yeah. with that. Yeah, let's he's influenced. So um, maybe he's going to work for the show one day. Hey. I mean, he doesn't have a job. I, hey. You know? So anyway. Well, he has one job. Yeah. <laughs> Which may have cost him the other. But that's another that's story. That's another story. <laughs> that's a different podcast. Yes, you know? it. Um, but he his homework assignment for this week was an X-Men, um, the Uncanny X-Men issue. I think it says 304. Uh -huh. But the, the key thing about this issue and this, this storyline here. This comic comes from a storyline called Fatal Attractions, which okay. I actually recommended to one of our fans last week when they asked about X-Men comics. Right. This is one that we've talked about here, um, and we're going to get into X-Men 97 later, but a scene from last week's episode when Magneto kind of electrifies or magnetizes the whole globe right. happens in this storyline. Okay. This this comic is, is the one where Magneto is on Asteroid M, mm -hmm. and he's kind of like, you know, waging war against humans or whatnot. Right. But the big, big, the the changing point, the big milestone of this comic for me was when Magneto ripped the adamantium out of Wolverine's body. Okay. That happens in this comic. All right. So I'm just wondering, dude, do you think they're bold enough to do that scene in X-Men 97? Dude, the way they're going, I, um, they're bold enough to do anything. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't... You know, I wouldn't be surprised. Me neither. Um, but it was all my thing about. So I mean, we'll get to it. But yeah. dude, he was so pissed off, he couldn't wait to even get dressed. <laughs> <laughs> this dude in his skivvies, yes, you know, magnetizing the whole globe. But anyway, yeah, we'll yeah, no, it. that yeah, that was. I actually had that as one of my like, dude, why is my man up there in his tidy whities? Right, you know, right? just waging war. <laughs> you know what? It's better than that giant M, though. It definitely is. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll take, I'll take, the, I'll take the skivvies. Yep, Magneto in the underwear is better than the giant M. That's a little preview to agree to disagree, right. by the way. Um, but dude, th that well, I've talked about when I first saw that panel as a kid. I, I was in a grocery store. Yeah. You know, flip through the page and I'm like, holy shit. Like, it, it was shocking. That was like, you know, it's funny because you, you, now you see the progression on screen. That, to me, that was like equivalent to what the snap was on screen. Probably, yeah. You know what I mean? That big of a moment, like, because right. this is a character who the, the claws are what defined him for so long. Right. And then back then, you've talked about this a lot. You had that one comic, but it wasn't like, you know, five minutes later, you were... It, you're waiting right. 30 days at least to find exactly, out what happened, exactly. you know? 
Um, so that this is this week's homework assignment. So I'm actually I'm gonna check this out. You uh, mentioned the Marvel app, yep. great app. Yeah, we're here. We are promoting something else that you know that we're not getting no, credit for. We or, should or, or some kind of benefit. Yeah, exactly. But at, great app. I'm gonna check this comic out before yeah. next week. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Dude, rumor. There's a rumor about Secret Wars, show a uh, movie we've talked a lot about. Okay. Your boy, Chris Evans. Mm-hmm. You've said plenty of times he's the iconic. He's that nailed that Captain America role, right? Right. He's rumored to return for Secret Wars, Avengers Secret Wars. How do you feel about that? I'm I'm all over the place, dude, <laughs> at, this, at this point. I mean, I, I just wish they would have Resurrection, re- resurrection, I can understand. Mm-hmm. And actually, that's one of the things I'm going to talk about when we get into X-Men 97 and, okay. and um, our hidden gem for the, mm-hmm. this week or our Omega level something. Something, another, yeah. Right? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm okay with Resurrection because they've done that a lot in comics. Mm. Um, you know, you can't have a comic for 70 years and your main characters don't die off at right, some point. Right, right. Yep. So I can understand Resurrection. But this whole... The multiverse is giving them too many options. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you got time travel. I was talking about this with my wife last night. You got time travel. Um, you got alternate universes. Yep. You have um, multiple universes, and then you have the multiverse. And then you have alternate time streams. I mean, it's just so yeah. much. And what what they forget is that a person like Chris Evan, uh, uh, he iconifies Captain America or Six that Six. Up? What, Iconify? Yeah. I don't know. Dude, Probably. That, I'm, another I'm one. Doing, I'm just doing it so often that I don't even Dude, know, you know yeah, every, what's happening every, now. Like, I think it's every other week you create a word. Hey, so anyways, it. he Iconified we, it. We, we, we got to we gotta have a dictionary of Adrian's yeah. off-the-cuff it, words that he creates. Absolutely. Long title, but we'll get to that too. Yes. So um, I'm, I'm cool with the, with the resurrection stuff, but it's just so much. It just makes it weird yeah. at some point. You know, I'm cool with him coming back. I don't even care anymore. Bring it uh, yeah. back. Don't bring it back. <laughs> I'm with snap, you. No snap. No yep. snap. You know, uh, uh, Tony Stark, no Tony Stark. I yep. just do whatever, dude. Yeah. You, guess what's, what's, guess what's going to happen? They're going to do it anyway. Exactly. True. Yeah, I, I guess the, the one thing that I, I, I makes it okay for me is if it's not a true, like, resurrection of that character. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, he's um he's old man um, Cap now, right? In, well, in this universe. Yeah, looking like Joe Biden. Um, so I hope it's not like I hope they don't de-age the same character. You want to pluck him from another dimension, timeline, uh, universe, multi, whatever the hell. I'm good with that. Uh-huh. The other thing is, you know, this is Secret Wars we're talking about, right? Battle World, where like we we reviewed this comic here recently. So if you didn't check out that episode, go back and check that out. Mm-hmm. Um, but in that comic, we saw characters that were dead in the comics show up in Battle World, right? So that's Maybe it's an easy out to where they don't have to explain why they're there because it's just Battle World, um, and and, it, and a dead character could show up here, mm-hmm. or you know, with this whole multiverse trip, are they going to just pluck another Captain America who just happens to be played by Chris Evans mm-hmm. from that universe right. and, and drop him in here? I I don't know, dude. It's like so we we talked early on, you know, before episodes like twenty twenty five thirty. You know, we mm-hmm. talked a lot about content. Yeah. You know, they're just making this convoluted. There's still so many stories. Right. There's still, you know, um, you know, how did Superman become Superman? How did Batman become Batman? How did Flash and how did Spider Man and mm. blah blah all this crap, dude? It's like you got 50, 60 years of stories. Mm-hmm. Get on with telling the stories. Right. Stop trying to make, tr- stop trying to reinvent the beginning yeah. all the time, which is what they appear to be doing. Right. You got plenty, plenty, plenty of storylines. Just tell the stories and not trying to, okay, so, well, we've told the Martha story a bazillion times. Well, let's just put a multiverse spin on it. Yeah. Let's put a, you know, uh, <laughs> I, it's it just, it's, it's getting weird. Right. It's getting weird. Right. And I, I, multiverse is a big, big concept. Right. And I feel like, you know, to your point of how many stories there are, we, we could have stayed grounded for longer. Right. We could have lived at that Avengers level, you know, even from the first move, but we had to keep getting bigger. And and when you do that now, it's like it's either continue to get bigger or do a complete reboot, right. which I think they're kind of doing both. And they're going to try to go as big as possible with the mm-hmm. Secret Wars movie, and then hopefully it's a reboot. But the problem with going bigger and bigger and bigger is that you're going to start making bigger, more obvious mistakes. Yes. You know, I think if you keep it grounded, um, just you'll, you'll engage people mm-hmm. more. Um, there's an opportunity for them to to kind of like 
understand and 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 absorb what's happening. Yeah. You know, how do you eat a, a whole cow? Well, you know, a bite at a time. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't. You, but what they're trying to do is change your physical form so they can shove this cow down your into your body all at once. Right. And I, I think that's going to be problematic. Yeah. Well, we'll find out in a couple of years, I guess. I guess. <laughs> Unless there's another writer's strike. <laughs> uh, there's that. Um, more Avengers news. Chris Hemsworth. So he he's on the cover of Vanity Fair's uh, May issue. Mm-hmm. And they asked him about the, the beloved movie, Adrian Thor, Love and Thunder. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yes. So now his take on it, he says that the movie was too silly. He said that he got caught up in the improv and the wackiness, and I became a parody of myself. I didn't stick the landing. Very self-aware by Chris. Right, Hemsworth, right. right. You know what? I have more respect for him that he said that. And Absolutely. I don't know if he was coached in that, but the fact that he said that at all, mm-hmm. um, he didn't pull a uh, machete and like, oh, well, it's, it's, it's your responsibility to figure out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you didn't understand it. it. I don't want, hey, I'm, I'm just doing whatever I do. You figure it right, out. Right, right. So I actually have more respect for him Yeah. Um, that he said that. Now, what's interesting is that, Apparently, we're not the only one that thought it was shitty. Yeah, yeah. Or, or, or everybody's watching only comics, There's and they that. be like, hmm, those guys have a point. Mm-hmm. That was shitty. So the fact that they're asking him on Vanity Fair, which has nothing to do with comics, right? right? You know, how you felt about Lo- Love and Thunder means that, you know, more people thought, more than us thought that Love and Thunder was shit. Oh, yeah. Right? And, like I said, I respect um, that response. So that was cool. Yeah, I definitely respect it. And if we were on Agree to Disagree with Chris Hemsworth, mm-hmm. whenever he does come to the show, right, we'll right. do that. But I would agree with him on that. You Absolutely. Know? Um, and now, hearing him say that, for me, I also look into it like this. It's a good thing because if he does come back, it means he's going to make an effort not to make to a that, you know because it's like Taika Waititi thought it was great I and mean, it was right. like let's keep doing this shit right. you know <laughs> so at least he understands that that sucked right. so the next time you get a chance like I'm sure he'll be back in Secret Wars because sure. Thor's not been killed off right. um, and I just hope it, it kind of reverts back to that you know pre Love and Thunder Thor right just, isn't Taiki still riding off into the sunset on his bike or something? Hopefully, some shit, yeah. Right? I think he's actually he's with Andy Muschietti. <laughs> they got the same bike, you know. Um, Two for yeah, definitely, definitely. Because I mean, the Thor character up until Love and Thunder, I think, had a great arc oh, in the absolutely. MCU. I mean, he started off as the arrogant asshole, right. you know, the the aloof guy, and to the point where Odin kicked him off the throne. Right. Like I like those early Thor movies. I think they've aged well. Absolutely. Not the second one, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, the dark elves and all that shit. Yeah, but yeah. the first one, dude, I really enjoyed that. Yeah. I thought it was funny. Yeah. And then the maturity, and I thought I think we saw his peak in Infinity War, mm-hmm. you know, um, interacting with the the Guardians, losing his hammer in right. Ragnarok. Oh, we have it here though, you know, so that's okay. Of course, of course. Um, but yeah, I I really really dude at like that end game point, mm-hmm. Thor was one of my favorite Avengers right, in the right. MCU. And like I said, you know, when he first came out, they were like Thor. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I I, I was even because he was like a you know fourth fifth tier kind of character in the comics right and they were like thor well i mean why are they making a movie about this guy right exactly but he actually turned out to be very well done you yeah know, uh, the first few one and then love and thunder just messed it up right. with everybody yeah and I, I think you got to give a lot of the credit to chris hemsworth for embodying that character like right. he knocked that role out of the park oh, you yeah, know? absolutely and any mature he grew like it was sometimes these guys play characters and it's the same damn thing every movie right i feel like you were getting a different thor every time we saw him right um all right, another rumor. So last week, we had a, a great preview. And I say great, it's a little biased because, you know, it was our preview. But a great preview of uh, Deadpool and Wolverine. We talked a lot about the cameos, the confirmed ones, the um, um, rumored ones. So there's another rumored cameo, Adrian. Um, um, you might you might like this. I don't know. Your boy Wesley Snipes is rumored to cameo as Blade in Deadpool and Wolverine. How do you feel about that? Uh, I think that'd be awesome. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, I don't know why he hasn't resurrected his film career. Mm. I mean, I mean, I, the only thing I heard about him was taxes. Yeah, I mean, come on, just pay the money and move right, on. That right. was like twenty years ago. Yeah, I, I think he's squared up now. Yeah, yeah, but it's like, but why does something <laughs> like that stick on you? Mm. Um, so I'm assuming that it's 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 him more so. Yeah. Um, than than the movie industry, uh, because there aren't a lot of you know, black actors um, at his caliber that can play the, like the different movies and stuff. Mm. I would even had him as a fill in for Black Panther, Ooh. you know, as some version of it. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, so, uh, but so I'm cool with the cameo. Yeah. You know, I think it'd be pretty cool. I hope it's better. I hope they don't do this crazy 
silly CGI shit like they did with uh, <laughs> Nick Cage, Nick Cage <laughs> and the Superman. Thing. We're going to have Blade with long hair flowing like <laughs> <Right>? Nick Cage. <laughs> uh, no, no. Yeah, I, I would be down with this. Yo, actually, crazy thing is I've never seen the Blade movies. Really? Yeah. Oh, I may have to do a little deep dive into those. Yeah, you got to watch at least the first one. Yeah. Uh, like when he first came out. And then, actually, I think the third one had uh, Ryan Reynolds in it as well. That's right. Yep. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a good trilogy, yeah. man. It's like, especially back for that period of time. Yeah. Well, you know, we, we can ask the people, Adrian. Would you guys like to hear an Only Comics Blade review? You know, those our, our patented deep dives, Adrian? Mm-hmm. I'd be willing to go through a little blade, you know, um, binge and, and do right. a little deep dive on that. So what? We'll, we'll ask the fans what they think. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. Um, and, and also, I I heard this recently too that um, Marvel's kind of losing faith in this blade um, reboot that they were working on with Mar- Marshall Ali. Really? Yeah. So there, there's even some some subtle rumors about them wanting to maybe just go back to having Wesley Snipes play Blade. I am down with that. Yeah. I'm down with that. I mean, if you can have, you know. You know, what's his face coming out uh, playing Batman, uh, Michael Keaton? <laughs> and, and, and what was there a rumor about Joe Biden playing uh, Captain yeah, America? Ca- yeah. I mean, come on, you can bring like, Wesley Snipes. <laughs> yeah, yep. I, I, I would be down with it. Yeah. But the thing is, dude, the guy they have replacing him is only a few years younger. Right. It's not like they got some 20 year old playing, you know, Blade now. So shit, might as well just have him keep going. Um, Giancarlo Esposito okay. joins the MCU, Adrian, in okay. a mystery role. Now he says it's. That he promises that it's better than you can imagine. So he had been rumored to um, be on the um, the rumor mill, if you if you ha- will you or as as you as you may, uh-huh. um, said that he would uh, be playing Magneto. Okay. I'm sorry, not Magneto, Professor Xavier. Okay. Now that uh, him by him saying that it's better than you can even imagine, I'm wondering if it's not that. Like I, the the rumor is that he may be playing someone else now. So okay. I guess. My question to you is, um, who do you think this guy could play? I mean, he could play just about anyone, but who do you think he's casted as? Is he a Kang replacement? Is he an entirely new villain? Is is he an X-Men? Is he an existing event? Who knows? Um. So, okay. Carlos Esposito. I can't imagine him playing anyone uh, off the cuff. Okay. Now, I'm not saying that he can't. Yeah. Xavier is not that person. Definitely not Magneto. Yeah. Um, so I can't think of a character off the top of my head. He's definitely not going to play a traditional black character mm. like um, B- uh, Bish- Bishop. Bishop, yeah. Um, He's older, too. So. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, maybe, well, Black Lightning is a DC character. Yeah. Um, so is Static. I, I, off the top of my head, I don't know. Hmm. Um, but, like I said, they did an excellent job with uh, Jason Momoa and um, Ripley in the Aquaman thing. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I so I hey, know. that that being said, do you think it's that crazy for him to play Charles Xavier? Um, I wouldn't say so, but again, I I don't see it initially. It. But okay. I mean, he does his body type fits the mold. Yes. You know, he's he's a thinner. Um, you know, he can definitely do the balding thing. Yeah. Um, he definitely has the um. It's in the eyes. Yeah. It's in the eyes, um, which is one thing I want to bring up about uh, Chris um, Hemsworth. Mm. I hope he doesn't come back with, um, you know, with that look in his eyes, like, <laughs> you know, I don't want to be here. Oh, the Brie or, Larson. The Brie Larson yeah. look. So I hope w- whatever he does in the future, he doesn't come back with that. Because yep. for me, it's about how it starts inside mm-hmm. and you just project what's inside outside. So I think he, he would nail it as Xavier. Yeah. Um, but of course, I'm brainwashed over the, like the last forty years to have some old white dude sit in the chair. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, that, that's yeah. my thing. But you know, you, you bring up the Aquaman point. Same deal there, right? Up until Jason Momoa, we're looking at like a you know blonde haired little um, you know almost Namor knockoff. Yeah. Well, first of all, you know <laughs> I'm disappointed. Okay. By it. That is Aqu- the, the the blonde Aquaman was not a Namor knockoff. <laughs> Namor is awesome in every respect. That crap that they had on, like some dude <laughs> going through the water, moving his legs and stuff. I mean, that was that was just silly. The reason I think that he was able to, uh, Jason Momoa was able to do the the Aquaman thing, yeah. um, so so good is because Aquaman was never really anybody. Mm. I mean, um, he was like one of the founders of the Justice League, right? Or he was included, 
in the Justice League, but he really was like nobody. Yeah. I mean, he was just like a dude that could talk to fish, you know? Mm-hmm. But uh, the way they portrayed like Jason. Deep. Huh? <laughs> like deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the way they portrayed jo- Jason Momoa, him able to move through water, he, because Aquaman is the underwater Superman. Right. So they amped up his, his strength. They amped up his capability. Mm. They amped up his ability to move through the water. So the, a, a tremendous job. Yeah. Now, I'm wondering if, um, what's his face? Um, anyway, I'm wondering if he thinks that, we think that Xavier, if he goes into that role, Carlos Esposito, mm. is that character that's beyond what you think is going to be. Or if there's a character that, in his mind, supersedes Xavier. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, it's very vague. It could go either right. route. But I, I'm, you know, I'm trying to think who in this universe would be at that level. Like, you, it'd have to be an Xavier Magneto or something right. like that. Now, is it in this same rumor that when we first heard the Carlos Esp- or Giancarlo Esposito rumor about Xavier, the rumor also included um, Lawrence Fishburne. No, uh, Den- Denzel. Denzel playing right. Magneto. Right. But forget about that. Could Giancarlo Esposito play Magneto as well? We've seen him play a badass villain in a right. few shows. I mean, right. Breaking Bad or The Boys. Um, so I'm wondering, you know, could it be that? Right. I, I think it's all possible, mm. but um, doesn't make sense to mm. do that. I mean, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. make sense to to have all these because we're trying to make, you know. Um, Female, um, right. Silver Surfers. Yeah, we're trying to cross all these different boundaries and stuff. But there's so many. I mean, we're going to talk about somebody today that I had never even heard of until yeah. you know um, this new show came out. Right. But he's been around since '83, '89, something yeah, like yeah. that. You know, and the dude's a badass. Yeah. I just gave that away. The fact that it's a dude. Sneak anyway, peek. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so it could be, there's plenty, plenty of people that these people can play right. without them trying to do these, you know, transformations yeah. of gender and race. And well, the, the thing about stuff, Magneto you know? is his, you know, his, him being Jewish is a huge part of his origin. Absolutely. So it's hard, like, you're going to have to change a lot, which, which you could, if, right. if done right. I mean, it's kind of like that disclaimer we always have, like, if done right, hey, I'm, right. I'm here for it. Right. But it's kind of like, do you want to take the easy layup or do you want to try to hit the half-court shot, you know? Well, again, it's like they're always trying to start over. Instead of right. continuing on with mm-hmm. the, you know, decades and decades of storylines, yep. they're trying to start over again like they did with um, uh, Gordon, right? They mm-hmm. made Gordon black. Right. So, so what does that mean? Now, uh, Barbara, who is Barbara? Right. To this new Gordon. So they have to change that whole thing. Yep. Now, that's a minor character compared to yeah. Magneto. And he's but, someone where his race is not a huge part of the character. Right, right. Magneto you know, is. <laughs> right. You don't have that whole, um, you know, uh, camp thing going on with right. the Jewish uh, people. It's like, it's crazy. Yeah. I, I think it's too much. Yeah. I mean, like, you're not going to make Black Panther, you know, like Australian or something. Exactly. <laughs> like, exactly. it's just not going to work. Yep, yep. Um, so... We're going to wrap up a little thumbs up, thumbs down, Adrian, like we always do. Okay. Cool. Um, so, number one, Bo DeMaio assigns a little homework, teasing um, Fatal Attraction's ad- adaptation into X-Men 97. I'm giving this a thumbs up. Yep, thumbs up. Chris Evans rumored to show up in Avengers Secret Wars um, in a couple years. Um, I guess at this point, I, I, I give it a right. thumbs up, whatever. Yeah, it's like, whatever. Yep. Uh, Chris Hemsworth owns the fact that Thor Love and Thunder was a little too silly. He said he got caught up in the improv and the wackiness and became a parody of himself and did not stick the landing. Mm-hmm. Thumbs up. Great self-awareness. Not only thumbs up for Chris Hemsworth saying that, but thumbs up to Vanity Fair for asking a question, yeah. which proves to us that people are watching Absolutely. only comics. Absolutely. Dude, we're, we, got, we got thumbs up almost across the, well, across the board so far. Wow, so okay. here we go. Wesley Snipes rumored to show up as Blade in Deadpool and Wolverine. Thumbs up. Not only is that a thumbs up for him showing up as a, in, in, you know, a cameo, mm. let's just, you know, get rid of, just let's j- just go back to old school and make him the blade. There we go. Giancarlo Esposito joins the MCU officially in a mystery role, but he promises it will be better than you can even imagine. I'm going to give it a thumbs up. Uh, sure. I mean, uh, again, we'll wait to see what yes. it is, but I mean, you got a very powerful actor, you know, ever since school days, right? Mm-hmm. You got a very powerful actor and um, I, I think he can play any role. Yeah. And I think that's why that's why I give it a thumbs up is he is a great actor mm-hmm. and to see him, you know, he's 
um, been, been uh, in Breaking Bad, a show that we talked about right. here before that went on one season too long. Mm. Um, but uh, <laughs> but no, nah, I mean, so great show. But he played it. I mean, he but the re, he's partly the, one of the reasons why I say it went on too long because he was such a great villain mm -hmm. in his season, mm -hmm. and then he they kill him off and they bring in some like you know uh, this as you would be B level. Right. Villain, so uh, but so we saw him there, and he was in the boys, and we all yep. do. We know that the seven would solo the or would defeat the Justice League, of, of course. course, right? But he played a great character in there as well. So it, seeing him get into the MCU, I think is a, is major sure. thumbs up. Sure, and you know what's what's also interesting about this whole um, thing? You know, we've talked about how comic mo comic book movies are no longer comic book movies, They're right? Just it's, movies. Yep. Now notice that there's a trend. It, at first, it used to be just you know the wrestlers going into comics. Mm -hmm. um, now it's like A-listers. Yep. Uh, they're even talking about like A-list actors. Right. Going and into proud comic, of it too. Right. Going into comic book movies. So yep. you know this this is this is happening. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, and comics is everywhere, right? I mean, oh, vid yeah. video games. Yeah. Right. I don't know um, if you had seen. There was a trailer recently. We don't talk about games a lot on here because we know you're you just love playing Ratchet and Clank. That's you know, it. So, That's it. but um, there's this game Marvel 1943 mm -hmm. Rise of Hydra. Have you uh, seen this? I I have. I yeah. have. I, I what attracted me was the AI mm. in it. Uh, dude, that's awesome. Yeah. Dude, and, and this is, so you're playing as Cap, right? Captain, mm -hmm. at, 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 what I read about is there's four characters you'll control. Right. One of them being Steve Rogers and the other one being Black Panther, but not T'Challa. This is Correct. 1943. It's probably his grandfather or, or his father, or something, father, like father something like that. Um, and, and then you, they also play some like non non supers as well. Right. Um, dude, this so so far this game looks amazing, dude. Right. Now, will this get you to maybe take a break from Ratchet and Clank and try something else? Um, <laughs> probably not. Okay. However, <laughs> I wish that they would just make. Um, movies animated movies mm. in the same um style that they make these games yeah because that game the commercial looks just oh awesome. yeah I'm, I'm, I, at first i thought it was a, a, a live action movie right um but i kind of knew it wasn't because the the uh video game movies they talk a certain way mm -hmm. where they intro with a lot of talk before they actually start showing people yeah um so that that's how that opened so uh but then when you see the 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 characters they're like Dude, make a movie like this, please, right. somebody. You know, yeah. No, I I agree that that would be would be really cool for yeah. them to take the, that stuff because I mean w when you see like you're talking about these trailers, dude, it looks like a movie trailer. Exactly. You exactly. Know? And it wouldn't cost three hundred million dollars. No, the, hey, that's something you could do with three hundred million. You know, you can right. make a movie at that level. Um, but this is a game I am looking forward to. I did play. There was an Avengers game that came out a few years ago, mm -hmm. and it was one of those. Um, if if that Avengers game was a movie, it'd probably be Batman versus Superman. Yeah, <laughs> there were some parts that were really cool. Then mm -hmm. there were some parts that were really freaking bad, and then the end was atrocious. Mm -hmm. um, but. Getting one of the, the the best parts of that game was there were so many different characters that you could play as, mm -hmm. and playing using their different power sets. Like you're using Iron Man, you're flying around, you're shooting the, you, right. you know, Spider Man's in there. Uh, T'Challa was in, it. so it was it was cool from that aspect. Mm -hmm. So it, what I guess the point I'm making is it teased for me what they could do with some games, mm -hmm. if and and they're a lot like movies. You got to have good stories. You gotta have a good plot. You gotta have good voice acting. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm looking forward to this just because I have played as some of these characters in other games and just to see what they can do. So right. we'll see. I think it's next year, rumor to come out. Okay. Hey, um, speaking of that, um, DJ, the the drone yep. maker. Yeah. I think they're coming out with some technology where you, you ever been to Disney in, on those rides, those virtual rides, mm -hmm. where you like um, what is it um, the the blue people on the planet with the oh the Avatar, Avatar. Right? yeah yeah so. You um you get on this motor motorcycle looking thing right mm -hmm. and you got this giant screen in front of you and you like flying through uh, the world and all this other kind of stuff yeah I think DJ is coming out with some technology like that like the three D glasses yeah where you're looking from the perspective of the drone no shit sure. right yeah. so now imagine that take that a couple of years ahead. And apply that to these games, mm -hmm. right? So you're in this game. It's it's gonna feel like you. Not only are you selecting and playing a um, a, a character, right. but you're actually feeling everything. The blows to a degree, yeah, to a yeah. degree. Um, you're actually there. You know, you, you're surrounded. So I think that's where all this stuff is going to. Yeah. And I think what's gonna happen when that happens, um, 
Yeah. <laughs> Some people's bodies are just going to go to shit, dude. They're, they're not going to yeah. want to leave that. Exactly. Come on. They're going to hook up freaking tubes to their body, <laughs> you know, uh, tubes to their, 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 their penises and shit yeah. so they can just piss. <laughs> I, it, it, I, I think it's going to get, get yeah. bad. I mean, we really are going to be the Matrix. We're, being, yeah, we, we're, we're going matrix. toward the Matrix. They're we making are. the Matrix real. Instead of being in a pod already, yeah. thinking that you're in the real world, they're going to make you think that you're in a, oh my goodness, they, you're in a real <laughs> world, and they're going to make you think you want to be in a pod. Right. Right? Oh, that's awesome. Damn. Shit. Well, you heard it first here. So when it happens, remember, you heard it first here on Only Comics. And, so. and you have a choice, because you can just stick with Ratchet and Clank. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right. So I, I figured, Adrian, before we get into our, I don't even know what we're calling it. I guess it's technically it's a hidden gem. Um, it's not an Omega level mutant because it's not a mutant. It's mm -hmm. actually kind of like an android, you know. But sure. before we get into that, sure. um, I'm going to play a little game here, Adrian. All right. Now, we played longer and shorter on our one year anniversary sure. show. We're going to play higher or lower, okay? Okay. Um, I'm not going to give you the scores. But I pulled up some Rotten Tomato scores. A lot of movies we talk about here, and a lot, some people don't agree with you know our takes on them. So uh -huh. The Eternals being one of them. Ugh. So this is a segment that is maybe dedicated to the Eternals movie. Is there a shit level <laughs> uh, as far as the scoring is concerned? I mean, there's there's percentages. So I guess, um, and these are from Rotten Tomatoes. So I think it's um, anything under maybe fifty is considered rotten. All right. All right. So I'm gonna name a movie. Hold on. Are we going? Numbers or going you're gonna, percentages? You're going to tell me higher or lower. Oh, okay. Got it. I'm going right. to give you the percentages at the end. Okay. okay. Percentages. So got it. That way, that way you can't kind of, well, that, that way you have no advantage. All right. right. You know nothing about this, I guess. All right. The Eternals. Did the Eternals rank higher or lower than 2003's Daredevil? Lower. Nope. Higher. Really? Yep. Now I'll give you the oh, scores at the end. Was it higher or lower than Madam Web? Uh, lower. Higher. Wow. Was it higher or lower than the Marvels? Uh, dude, I okay, lower. Yes, it was lower than the Marvels. Right. Higher or lower than Blue Beetle? Um, I would say higher. Nope. Blue Beetle ranked higher than the Eternals. Really? Yep. Mm. Did the Eternals rank higher or lower than Black Adam? Lower, did the blue did that rank higher or lower than Black Adam? Yeah, the Eternals. Um, I would say higher. Yep, it did. Did it rank higher or lower than Dark Phoenix? Higher. Yes. Higher or lower than Thor: Love and Thunder? Higher. No. No. Thor: Love and Thunder ranked higher than the Eternals. Wow. And then last one, did the, the Eternals rank higher or lower than Zack Snyder's Justice League? Um, lower. Lower. You are correct. So here's the scores. Ready? Yeah. The Eternals, 47% yep. on Rotten Tomatoes. Black Adam, 38%. Wow. I'm surprised with that one. Yeah. Um, Madam Web, 11%. Damn. That might be a little high. <laughs> right. <laughs> Daredevil, 2003, ranked 43%. So Eternals just edged out Daredevil. Dark Phoenix, 22%. Thor Love and Thunder, 63%. That's shocking. Snyder cut seventy one percent. That's I think that's fair. The Marvel sixty two percent. The highest ranked movie on this list is Blue Beetle at seventy eight percent. Wow. Yeah. So there you have a little higher or lower. Interesting. Um, yeah. So when 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 some of our fans say you know they, we get this a lot we love this show you guys are great you're our favorite people in the world you know maybe, maybe your, your i'm excited voices are magnificent. yeah <laughs> yep your best best <laughs> podcast i've ever seen or watched in my entire but is always that but right. we don't get the eternals hate according to rotten tomatoes a lot of people get the eternals hate right <laughs> so there you have it um all right moving on all right our omega level hidden gem that's not a mutant that's an android well that's the name of this segment right now <laughs> so um, what do we got this week, Adrian? All right, so this character I kind of alluded to earlier. Uh, been around for decades. Never even heard of him until mm. like a week or so ago. Yep. Um, but deeply, deeply integrated with the X-Men, as are most things, right? Mm -hmm. So this week's character is not a Omega-level mutant. It's an Omega-level entity. Right? Yes. Um, this is Bastion. And Bastion or Bastille, uh, the root word is to build or referring to any place 
or concept um, used for protection. It could be a building, a concept, an idea, or belief, okay. which is what this guy is not. Right. right? <laughs> he is not interested in pro- – uh, actually, he is in pro- he's interested in protecting his cybernetic ways. Yes. But protecting humans, he has no interest in, and he's nope. the anti-human. Um, they listed him as a mutant-hating machine – um, that emerged from cha- uh, the chaos of chaos of battle, mm. a fusion of Nimrod and Master uh, Monitor, Mold. Master Mold. So, this is a matter of fact. His his origin even gets confusing, right? Yeah. They thought he was born. He thought it was. They thought he was a human. He's he's actually a fusion of Master Mold and um, no Nimrod. Nimrod. So. This is a cybernetic organism that is beyond, beyond. He's beyond um, the human-made sentinels. Uh, he's beyond the master mode. Yep. He's the one above all when it comes to sentinels, right? Um, and if you know uh, Nimrod, he's like the future version right. of, of the sentinels. Who we've seen in X-Men 97 a little bit. Right, right. Yep. So he's all that plus the master mode. So this character is... The amalgamation, they call him amalgam. He's mm-hmm. the amalgamation of all the Sentinel, all the tech, all the cybernetics, all the, even I think that virus that infected um, Cable. Cable. Yeah. Um, that's also a part of him, which also Got becomes it. part of his power sets. So his whole thing is to wipe out humans at a global scale, right? To the point that he even, with this techno virus, right, he'll infect humans. Right, which would then allow him to transform them, transform them, and or at the very least control them, mm-hmm. which we've seen some of that in X Men ninety seven. Right. Um, so he um, android body, so mm-hmm. he has all the characteristics of as as far as his powers are concerned. He has all the characteristics of um, cyberneticism. Right. So the superhuman strength, of which they don't say what it is. Superhuman speed, uh, durability. All the mechanical stuff. Now, in X Men '97, they portrayed him as being like Superman fast, right? Because he gets in a fight with Jean, mm-hmm. and he's like, you know, moving around like Gladiator was the, the the week before, right? But you know, online they describe him as being, you know, above any human level athlete. Okay. So, but I'm assuming because he's cybernetic, he can make his strength, speed, durability, whatever he wants to. Like Iron Man, right? Right. Iron Man, he can build armor to make him stronger, stronger, stronger. He has the Hulk Buster, Hulk, Hulk Buster armor, mm. but his typical armor allows him to lift 70 tons. So I'm assuming Bastion can, uh, because that's one of his powers, he can integrate anything mechanical or, or, or uh, technical into his body. Um, he can make himself as strong as he wants to. Yeah. Obviously not a, not a priority. Right. But so superhuman strength, speed, Durability, um, st- um, a st- stamina, agility, and um, like all sentinels, he can um, he can assess any mutant around him and determine what their power levels are. Um, he's immune to um, psychic probes, yeah. so like Jean Grey can't even detect because uh, Jean Grey and um, who was it? What's his name? Cable? Uh, Kate, uh, no, Gambit. Gambit. They inf- infiltrated some secret meeting, and Jean Grey didn't even know Bastion was there because she couldn't detect him. Damn. So, and she's Omega level. And she's Omega level, right. So she, he has that um, ability. Techno-organic virus basically means that he can infect anything or anybody yeah. uh, with this virus, and they become they can become part of him, or at the very least, he can use that to... So, for example, when he makes Sentinels, right? Um, any Sentinel that's made... He can see through them. He can experience whatever um, that they experience wherever they are. Um, so he can use that for, like, uh, you know, reconnaissance, mm-hmm. and information gathering, things like that, right? Um, so he can he can change his size. He can become, like, monolithic size if he wants to. And he does that through absorbing uh, other technologies and material around him. So if he goes into, like, a, a scrap yard, right? Yeah. He can take technically – take any of that scrap and make it a part of him, which would increase his size, his strength, his durability, things like that. Got it. Um, this is interesting. And I think I'm a, uh, another prediction. Oh, right? snap. Right. So he has the power of reanimation. Yeah. So using the techno virus, he can reanimate the dead. My prediction 
and a possible kind of um, anyway. My prediction is that you know how Gambit died. Yeah, I think since they introduced Bastion so early on, after or during, or, or basically after Gambit's death in X Men ninety seven, mm-hmm. that they are probably going to resurrect Gambit and in some kind of form. Okay, uh, in future series because. Like me, I don't think a lot of people really understood how important Gambit is. Mm-hmm. And he's like one of those favorites because he is, remember you you mentioned that at the end they do those profiles? Yeah. Well, he's back in the profiles, if okay. you notice. Yeah. Um, so I think that he, they might some kind of way reanimate Gambit um, in some future version of X-Men 97. Got it. So that would be cool. Yeah. So he yeah. can reanimate the dead. Too, Damn. Right? So they um, could use him in the MCU, is what you're saying. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure, <laughs> yeah, sure. Bring back Tony. Bring yeah, back everybody. Why not? Right? Fuck right. Um, hive mind, so he can connect to anything that he creates. Yeah. Right. Um, technopathy and techno transformation. That's that part where he can take um, anything, any circuit, any technology, and make it part of his body. Yeah. Um, he can create sentinels, of course. He can create. He's gotten to the point where he can create. Nimrod level master moles. Yeah. So it's not just about creating sentinels. Um, it's not just even about creating sentinels that can create sentinels. You know, he can create Nimrod level um, um, sentinels mold. that creates yeah. master moles that can create sentinels, and he can control all of them and see through all of them. Yeah. So that's literally so between his mission is to destroy humans, right? Mm-hmm. So if he can create all these sentinels. If anywhere he goes, he can absorb technology and the power. If he can reanimate the dead and then control them, right? Yep. And he can turn humans into sentinels. I mean, that's a rap dude. Yeah. I mean, so that pretty much makes him unlimited power. Right. right? Um, so so now you're talking about taking raw material and making it into anything that he can then either experience through or make it become part of him, but at the very least can control. That's Unlimited. Right. So that's the omega level part, yeah. you know, in this. Plus, you know, he got some wings and, you know, he can do all this <laughs> the self repair, you know, yeah. which is like an accelerated um, healing factor. That's what I need after like this uh, weekend of planting shit. <laughs> right. I need that self repair from Bastion, you know? Shit. Right? Or, or at least Wolverine. Yeah. You know, I, I'll take some, the slow version. Yeah. You know, whatever. Some, one of the um, energy projection from his hands, his mouth at some point, his chest at some point. Um, create energy fields. He created an energy field that I don't know what it is about New York. It's like everybody's experiment on New York. It's <laughs> yeah, like, of course. It's like Tokyo in the Japanese movies with right. Godzilla, right? Yep. Always get destroyed, always the center yep. of everything. But he can create these force fields of varying strengths and degrees. Uh, but at the very least, you know, that will encompass the city of New York. Yeah. So a lot of power, a lot of capability. Um, so, but I- I'm going to follow this guy. Um, and see where he goes, um, because I like I said, he's been around for decades. I've never mm. even heard of him. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's a cool power set, cool capability. But again, you know, with all this multiverse stuff, you know, are we getting to the point where everything is like too, 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 too powerful? I think so. You know, it's yeah. like people think of themselves as abnormal instead of being a, just a normal person. Why mm-hmm. can't you just be a normal person? Instead of being a normal person, <laughs> you think of yourself as not normal. So now you got to do extraordinary things, right? right? So like make 800 version of 30 second TikTok so you get the right one so you can <laughs> show everybody else that you're perfect right. and you're not. Exactly. It took you 87 <laughs> times to do it yep. or 93 or whatever the number was. Right. Right. I think they get to the point where it's like everything is like super, 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 which means that you got to be in the multiverse mm-hmm. and the timelines and the time. Dude, just go back to Daredevil kicking somebody's <laughs> ass in a dark alley. <laughs> right. How about we just get right. back to the basics? Yeah. Which is interesting because Marvel's kind of in this spot where they're they're doing both, right? Because uh-huh. they're they're building towards this big multiverse story, but we also got one of the next um, big big releases that at least I'm excited for is the Daredevil Born Again show, which is going to be a lot more grounded. You know, bringing Spider Man somehow they're eventually going to meet up. But mm. anyway, Bastion, dude, I I had no idea who this character was until X Men '97, just right. like you. Mm. Um, and I mean it, the origin that you laid out there is it's a little different than the origin they gave him in X-Men 97 right. in the, in X-Men 97, his dad was infected with some type of alien virus or something right. like that, which then passed when he, it on to him. Yes. Then when he passed, then, so then it, 
that's how he he was born, like part human, part mm-hmm. android. So a little different in right. X Men ninety seven, but I think power set equally as powerful. Right, right. Oh, some a couple other things he can teleport. Okay. He can time travel, and of course he can open up portals to go to of course different timelines yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So he he'll actually <laughs> open up portals into t- different timelines. So if he need more sentinels, yeah, he'll just instead of creating them, he just open up a portal and grab sentinels from whatever timeline. To bring him to where he is yeah. to help him do whatever he needs to do. So, dude, he—I mean—he could literally wipe out anything, yeah, in a, in a in a day. Right. So, I mean, I think it's a great segue to get into X Men '97 mm-hmm. because in episode seven and eight we get the introduction of Bastion in one of the episodes, and right. then in X, episode eight we get to see his origin and really some of these power sets that you're talking about now we see in the show, right? right. So, um. Dude, episode seven starts off with Gambit's funeral. Mm-hmm. I thought this was a great episode, yeah, by the way. Yeah. Um, so, so the real question is: yeah. Did you get some ice wet during the funeral? Uh, I did not. I did not. <laughs> um, I, I, it, it was emotional, you know. Right. But no, I, I wasn't. I didn't get ice wet on this one yet. No. Okay. Nope. Just um, checking. Yeah. Did you? <laughs> no, I no. did not. Um, but but I, I thought it was well done, Yes, you know, and then Rogue not wanting to be there because of how angry she was, and she's kind of on this whole revenge trip. Right. Um, you know, we'll kind of, cause since we're doing two episodes, we won't go, you know, scene by scene, obviously. I hope you all have seen it. But we see a couple uh, cameos in this episode. Yes. Got uh, Thunderbolt Ross, yep. you know, not played by Harrison Ford. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we got Cap. We talked a lot about Cap today. I mean, right. Captain America in this episode, dude. Yeah. Yo, that scene, when, <laughs> <laughs> that was the coolest scene. So Rogue's going, you know, ape shit because yep. right? she's pissed off about everything because she yeah. lost two of her men, right? Absolutely. She, she, she thinks she lost Magneto right. and Gambit, right? Mm-hmm. So she's pissed off. Yep. And so she goes to this secret place and Cap's there, right? Yep. And, you know, Cap's all, like, neutered. He's like, oh, you know, he's like, she, first of all, she calls him, like, the world's top cop, right? Yes. So that kind of pissed him off, but yep. he didn't really show it. So that was a cool thing. Right. And then he's like, oh, my hands are kind of tied. Oh, your hands are tied? Well, you don't need this then. So yes. So she takes his shield and throws that shit off into the mountains. Yep. That was just epic, dude. Yeah. That, that was just a perfect, yeah. perfect. And those are the things that I'm talking about where if you just go back to the basics, you don't need a multiverse to Correct. get good stories. Correct. And that was like a perfect example, yeah. dude. Correct, dude. I mean, and it was great use of Cap. And, yep. and now, I had suggested this. Uh-huh. I said they should do an MAU, a Marvel Animated Universe. Yep. And I think they're starting. I think they listen, you sure, know. But sure. but I hope this leads to something more. I hope we see more. It was because we also saw in episode eight, we saw Spider Man swinging by, yep. you know, and then at the screen at the end, we saw, and we'll get into that more. But we saw people like Doctor Doom. Yep. So there was a handful of little cameos. Some didn't even. There was no dialogue. It was just a you know a, a, um, just a visual. But, but but that shows how what was happening with the mutant world, how it impacts everybody correct. else around yes. the world, instead of in, in, including these major figures, yeah. right? Which is something that they do a horrible job with in a lot of these movies, right? You know, it's like New York City, Avengers one. There's aliens attacking. A, where's everybody else? Where's right. the Eternals? Yeah. Where's the Guardian? Where, where where's everyone? Yep. Why is it only the Avengers? Yep. Where's Captain Marvel? And then we get a movie where like, oh well, Captain Marvel was actually on Earth, you know. Ten years before that, mm. where the fuck is everybody? You know, the real question was: is where were those three chicks from uh, Madam Web? <laughs> I mean, they could have helped out somewhere. She should have saw it coming, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. Shit, you know, you know Scarlet Witch, somebody. Exactly. So, but and, and I get it. You know, it's it's a movie. <laughs> it, it's a lot different, but they've they've handled it much better in the, in the animated series. Um, so anyway. That, I did love that scene, what yeah. you're talking about with, you know, Rogue. Um, and it's like, it's funny because, <laughs> dude, yeah, he's Cap. He's a badass. But, bro, your shit's way the hell up there. Like, right. you, you ain't you ain't Thor. You ain't going to just call it back. Right. You can't right. just fly over there to it. You better go digging, motherfucker. Right. And, and I hope you got some uh, got a, uh, a tracker in that bad boy. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, she probably embedded it a few few yep. feet into a mountain. Absolutely. So this one that, you know, they're on the hunt for Gyric Trask. You know, yeah. one of these built the Sentinel. I mean, they're, they're those two are like, you know, the, the culprits of this damn show so far. Mm-hmm. Um, and what... Well, um, at, at one point, I'm, I'm kind of jumping around, but we see Cable come back. There, there's a big fight in this, right? Mm-hmm. And it and, I, and I'm, these episodes may be blending a little bit. Is there Wolverine gets his Wolverine moment finally? Yep. We had talked about this. Yep. 
where Wolverine's playing like babysitter, like he's just, well, what is he doing the whole time? Right. And he gets his Wolverine moment um, in this show. Mm-hmm. And I, I want to say it's it's seven. We could be wrong. We're not experts here. But um, there's, you know, ro- this this episode was like Rogue's, um, almost like Rogue's episode for sure. me. She also kills Gyrick, mm-hmm. right? She uh, Was it Gyrick or Trag? I get the two mixed up sometimes. Um, well, I think it was Gyrick, the one where she let him go. That was that was um, Bastion. Mm-hmm. Remember when he, no? no? Did no. I miss something? Because I thought when he landed, he didn't actually land. He transformed. No, Bastion turned him into a prime sentinel. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah that, got it, got it. that was, I think it was, um, that may have been Trask. Yes, it was Trask, because Gyrick was the one who was in Mexico. Okay. In the facility, and then someone killed him mm-hmm. in the sleep. Um, but Rogue has Trask and realizes she ain't getting nothing out of him and lets right. him go. That was cool. <laughs> that was. And that was cool. That, that was a cold moment. Like, Rogue, you know, Rogue hey. was, but it makes sense, though. Yep. You know, and this is where, you know, people get a lot of shit about our whole Justice League deal, but mm. w- one of the reasons why the X-Men would destroy them is Rogue will kill. Right. Superman Absolutely. and Batman are not going to kill. Yep. So how would you end the battle <laughs> with no killing? <laughs> I don't know. So anyway, but uh, you, you know somebody's gonna come up with red crypt- kryptonite for Superman. In that case, he doesn't care about anything. <laughs> right. So, I, but anyway. Yeah, maybe. Um, but then he um, hits the ground and then turns into this prime sentinel, and then this big old battle ensues. Right. Uh, and then Cable pretty much comes back and saves the day, and, and he kind of lays out this whole, you know, explains what happened, explains who. Um, now, th- at the end of this episode is where the whole Bastion reveal. Because we have no idea who this guy is. Right. At, up until this point, we think Sinister's behind everything, right. which but, they've been kind of teasing the whole time. Right, but then they say, well, Sinister is actually working for somebody yep. else. Yep. Because Sinister's, I mean, he's one of those, he's like a manager, right? He's mm-hmm. like, I only care about what I care about. And in, in Sinister's case, he only cares about collecting DNA and any information that he can in order mm-hmm. to further his mutant right. metamorphosis, basically, right. yep. he, he he wants to tinker all the time. Exactly, he's not a top man, top level executive. No, where he's got like the fifty thousand foot executive view. Now, th- th- that's when they introduce. Well, he's working for somebody else. Mm-hmm. Yep, and lo and behold, it's your boy Bastion, who right. we just got a great hidden gem, Omega threat level, not mutant, um, android segment. Ent- yeah. Entity. Entity, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, um, I know you were dancing around like, what? what yeah, what's yeah, the word? I mean, it was just a very long-winded title. Yeah, I don't yeah, remember, there you, go, you know. There you go. Um, but, you know, and, and dude, this battle's going. Like, he's giving yeah. it to him. And then Cable comes with this EMP, you know, right. basically neutralizes the guy and explains the whole deal. Um, and at, that's where we get you know, that end where Bastion kind of shows up and we realize Sinister is working for him. Right. And But the thing about what these two have in common, one of the big things is they both hate mutants right. to their core. You know, like Sinister, he'll, he'll keep them around them. Mm-hmm. He'll um, experiment on them. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, he's not a, you know, a mutant lover. Right. <laughs> and Bastion hates him, mm-hmm. you know. And they also, um, Bastion reveals to Sinister that Xavier is still alive in space. Mm-hmm. And then we also um, learn that Magneto's not, dead correct he is in captivity right by bastion or he's held captive by bastion so all in all, the episode i thought it was great yeah my my two takeaways are if cable can jump through time yeah why doesn't he jump through time to warn them right of this stuff that's yeah happening? why does he show up so late <laughs> right why does he show up you know um and, and number two if magneto is alive and and operating right mm-hmm. was Bastion doing something to suppress his power? Yeah, he had the collar on. Ah, you're right, you're right. Because I was like, yeah. why isn't this dude just breaking out? Because they said this, uh, you know, Magneto, Magneto, he's been silent, mm-hmm. he hasn't said anything, right? So I'm wondering, but I, I missed the whole collar thing. Yeah, well, and actually, I'm glad you brought that up though because it, <clears throat> I, I kind of forgot this, but one of the um, highlights of this episode or, or um, big moments for me was the fact that. Magneto's got this collar on, right. which surpe- suppresses his ability mm-hmm. to, you know, control metal, his magnetism. And this guy is shaving him with a straight razor, mm-hmm. which Magneto, if he had his powers, right. would cut his fucking head off. You know, like, right. dude, that's ultimate flex, and that's some cold shit. Like, right, right. Yeah, like, that's like you're toying with him. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so I thought that that was pretty, but it just shows you how sick Bastion is, yeah. you know. Um, and then Now, now, let's... It, a little clarification, I I think. Yeah. So, 
Um, Sinister, I don't think he hates mutants in a way that a doctor that goes onto a battlefield and they start trying to, well, can we sew this leg to this yeah. side of somebody's head? <laughs> I, I, he has no love for them. Yeah. To the level where he just wants to experiment on them. Mm-hmm. Bastion hates. Oh yeah, it's a different level. Hates I agree. Mutants, yep. Period. It is a complete different level. Right. Yep. No doubt. Um. So episode seven, bright eyes. Giving this a, a score out of you know one to ten, Adrian, I would, I'd probably say a good solid eight. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that. Um, and then we get into actually, I do an eight point five. Okay, because there was a couple of moments, and, and it's mostly surrounding Rogue. Yeah, when you know when she threw Captain America's shield, mm-hmm. the fact that she went ape shit all together, right? Yeah. Um, then she threw Cap Cap's shield. Um, and then the, the Gyric moment or whatever. Yeah, trash, killing trash. trash yep. she, she just dropped him. She's like, you know what? Yeah. Um, I have no use for you. You can't provide me with anything of, of value. Mm-hmm. Then there's no wor- reason for you yeah. to exist. Boom. Dude, how, how much better is this portrayal of Rogue than Anna Paquin in the Fox universe? I so much, so much better, dude. dude so night much. And day. I please don't even bring up Anna Paquin. <laughs> I mean, I, I liked her in um, – that that show that they had about the vampires and the ghosts okay. in in, in um, Louisiana or New Orleans or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but outside of that, I mean, I mean, she, she's a good actor, yeah. actress, but uh, yeah, a lot yeah, of it was not, just not that. Rogue, it was just rogue. that way that character was written too. Yeah. Like, why are they? You know, they're basically making Rogue Jubilee. It, yeah. Speaking of Jubilee, she goes with um, Roberto, and they tell his mom that he's mm-hmm. a mutant, and she basically like, Dude. don't tell anyone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, what's up with that? <laughs> I, that's, I mean, wow. Anyway, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so that was another big, big part of this episode, you know. Yeah. And I guess I'm glad that he's finally, like, it's out. Right. But I really, I hope in one of these next two episodes we get to see, you know, his full power. Um, They did show him fully. That's fully, right. When, yep. when, he, when he caught Jubilee from yes. the building, right? Yep, yep. But going back, I mean, dude, I mean. Mothers, they have this thing about their sons. Yeah. Right. And I, I guess money changes you mm-hmm. because I I mean they knew which was cool. Now, when he told her, and then she says, Okay, we already knew. Right. And then she said, Okay, now we need to suppress this to let mm-hmm. not let people know that you're us. I agree with that part. Okay. You know, just because you out it to your parents, that doesn't mean you need to go t- tell the whole world. You know your whole family dynamics, right? But then later on, yeah, you know when in she this just, next you know, episode. just oh man, that was that was heartbreaking. Yes, still no ice wet, but it was still just it just messed up from a mother son perspective. Mm-hmm. You know, and let's you know, there's no rules here on only comics except for we discuss comics and only comics, and sometimes something else. Sometimes, um, so we don't have to start at the beginning. Let's start at that part of this episode. Okay. So there is a part where I think it's those those OZT officers, right? right. The zero tolerance. They right. show up to Roberto's house, mm-hmm. and um, they're, they're actually those prime sentinels. Right. And they say, you know, they're trying to kill us. They're like, we, we, don't, we would never kill right, humans. Right. So right. it's all optics, right? Yeah. They're trying to kill him up to the point where now they're in front of people. Exactly. And then like, oh, we don't kill. We're just trying to kill yep. And his mom. Dude. So I, I don't know if it's just me reading into this, but she tells him to go with them. Correct. But the way she says it almost, I felt like she had some type of mind control almost. I may be re- but it's like her demeanor changed, and then he just responded as if he had no choice. Um, so the mother-son dynamic is crazy, dude. Yeah. Um, the, the mind control is money. So she, did, she never wanted to, first of all, she didn't want people knowing that she had a mutant son, mm-hmm. which is why she told him. And I kind of agree with it, not necessarily for the reasons that she said it, yeah. but so she looked around. And she saw that you know, she's at a fundraiser, right? She looks around and she sees all these people looking at her and judging her that, oh, my God, she has a mutant son. Yeah. So that's the control. So she gave him up because she didn't want her status affected, mm-hmm. right? And now, the son factor. Well, sons, they love their mothers, dude. Right. I mean, it's almost like mindless blah, blah, blah. You know, they just whatever. Yeah. You know? So when she said go with him, he's like, "Yeah, this is it. Mom's talking. That's yeah, I, I could be reading a lot into it, but I'm no. like, I, there was something about just the the demeanor and and the way he responded. I'm like, I don't know if it's just that he thinks he has to listen to her, or if there's some type. Maybe she has some mutant ability as well. 
that's a possibility. You know, but it's more. I th- I think yeah. it's more mother son dynamic. Okay. Now, even though she might have been influenced by any other means, yeah. he still had the choice to not listen to her. True. True. And Jubilee, Jubilee should have just went ape shit because remember she yeah. she was like, hey, you have a trust fund. Right, you don't have to sit here and listen to this. Let's right. bounce. She yes. did it then, yep. but then when you're when you're about to be handcuffed, you just go along with it. So maybe she's so, maybe she's mind controlling her too. I, yeah. Possibly. We'll f- we'll see. We'll find we'll out. See. You know, I am he who is right. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but this this is episode eight. Tolerance is existing. Um, is extinction. Sorry, uh-huh. tolerance is extinction. First part of a three episode um story to wrap up this season. So I thought you know the first part of this was. Phenomenal. Yeah. Um, you know, we see, we learn that Magneto is now captive. Um, and and I forget the uh, Doctor Cooper, the mm-hmm. the the blonde chick who's been like the uh, government. Right. Like right. she's there too for some reason, mm-hmm. and um, she's trying to talk to Magneto. Right. And ev- eventually, she's the one that lets really? him go. Do what you think about that? Right. I think that was cool. Yeah. Um, I think that was cool. Um, but didn't they like kill her? I th- I think she's dead. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yep. yep. Um. So she made the ultimate sacrifice for for the things that she believe in. Yeah. Uh, w- w- which is cool. Um. So we'll we'll see where this goes. So it, it definitely wasn't as impactful as the first one. Mm-hmm. But I still don't like. I cringe, dude. When they when people somebody says my ex man. I know. know that my ex dude, I'm stuff. so I'm tired like, of just, that. Just write that out, please. Yep. Somebody. Yep. I I said. I mean, I said I had some comments to some people that like it's been so overused mm-hmm. it, and they're like well it's the iconic x i know what it is mm-hmm. but it's like avengers assemble we heard it once in 10 years right i know that in the comics it, it's a little different seeing in a comic panel mm-hmm. than having some you know captain cringe saying it every 10 minutes mm-hmm. i'm glad we only saw it that one time in endgame mm-hmm. imagine if captain america said that every time they were fighting right <laughs> avengers yeah. assemble like <laughs> i do you, you don't say that, bro. You ever been in a fight? You don't like go, Adrian, assemble. You're just like, oh shit, they're here. Let's go. Right. <laughs> you know, right. like I, I think if, if they said it like that, the way they're portraying it in this show, <laughs> I think the, even the um, the um, the super villains would be like, dude, can we just yeah, exactly. Let's, you know, let's go have some coffee. We need to talk about <laughs> this assemble thing that you yep. guys got going on. Yep. I mean, it's how three people are saying they're my X Men. Like right. it's got. I thought only one person could own them. I don't know. Uh, I, do. I don't know how that works. I don't know. I um one one other thing that I got, and this is probably the only the other stuff about only comics is mm-hmm. like uh, the political part, right? Yeah. Um. So after the George Floyd thing, right? Um. There was this lady went on um on a on a newscast, and mm-hmm. she said that you know they they're lucky that black people want uh, are trying to get um equality. Or something to that effect, yeah, and not revenge or something like right, that. Right, right. Yeah. I'm paraphrasing. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's wrong, but they also said something like that in this. Yes, um, they said that you're lucky that uh, mutants want um, equality and uh, or something or coexistence to that or something. Uh, like yeah, that. coexistence. Yeah. Yep, yep. And, and in other words, we're trying to be show you that we are human. We're trying to show you that we can coexist. Right. You want to continue war. Right. You're lucky that we're trying to steal, even exactly. though you do all of this stuff to us. Yep. You, you, you're lucky we're trying to show you that we're trying to be compassionate and not just dominate everything. Oh, yeah. Because so. Xavier could hook up Cerebro and wipe out all the humans like that right. if he really wanted to. Right. You know, yeah. So that, and, and I think that's that whole, you know, is Magneto right? Deal, right? Because right? if it's up to Magneto, he's like, let's wage war against them. Right. And, but even, even though he had the power to, what did he do? He went, he, he, he's like enough, right? Yeah. So instead of what he could have done, because there's Mac, uh, this iron ore in everything, in the dirt, in mm-hmm. the butt, he could have literally exploded just the surface of the earth and wiped out every human on the planet. Right. He could have done that. But what did he do? He sent out a magnetic pulse, which is basically what Cable did. Correct. And destroy the, the, the sentinels or anything, any yeah. organic matter that had the, the sentinel virus in them. Right. So he was still not going against the humans. Correct. But against the, the, the things that were trying to oppress uh, the humans. So even in that, he's showing compassion and tolerance and not just obliterating everyone. Yeah. But I think what's going to happen, though, is not everyone knew that all those individuals had the sentinel virus. Virus. Okay. 
So it's going to be perceived as if Magneto right. just slaughtered a bunch of humans. Right, right. So Bastion's going to spin that like Absolutely. he did with the um, 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 Xavier, yep. you know, off on a planet, you know, hooking up with aliens and stuff. And that, and they're going to bring all the aliens. Now, now not only is he a mutant, but now he's going to bring this this alien force to, right. to the planet, you yep. know. Yep. Um, you know, you mentioned Cable and this whole, you know, time travel deal. Why didn't he just show up at the right time? So, right. you know, um, but he does explain to the X-Men that that Genosha massacre is a absolute point that can't be, you know, like there's all these little loot, like in the Spider-Man movie. Mm -hmm. These are points that, you know, can't be changed. Can't right, your, 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 your father, who's a police captain, has to die. Has to die. Exactly. Right. So this is one of those points in history. There well, when rolled through the, through uh, wh whoever off the thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he could have showed up before that and told True, him. That, yeah. wasn't, that wasn't an absolute point. Yeah. Man, just he's just, Cable's just late, dude. I mean, he's just always there, like, right. You know, even at Genosha, well, I guess that he makes that makes sense now. But dude, like he tried to warn them, and it right. was too late. But yeah, he could have showed up, you know, before he wrecked uh, the whole saying. building and all that shit. Right. But I don't know what the hell he's doing, you know. Or or or, or um, what's the other time traveling dude? Bishop. Bishop. I yeah. mean, one of them could have showed up. Yeah. I mean, some uh, or 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 have um. Deadpool show up since he stole right. Cable's shit, right? right. I mean, somebody. Matter of fact, up. where is Bishop? By the way, he I... took Nathan to the future. Cable comes back. Well, well where the fuck are you, Bishop? <laughs> what are you doing? God. Uh... Uh, there, there was a, a part I thought was a really nice callback and almost kind of shot at the Fox movie series. So if you remember, um, in the first X Men movie, uh -huh. when they get there, when Wolverine first puts on his X Men suit, the black one, right. He makes a statement to Cyclops that's something along like through black leather, really. And mm -hmm. Cyclops is like, what did you expect? Blue and yellow tights. Right, right. Right. So they kind of threw a shot back mm -hmm. when um when Cyclops is giving um Cable his X-Men suit, which is blue and yellow. Mm -hmm. And he Cable says something like, Are we going to war? Or are we going to the circus? <laughs> and he goes, What do you want? Black leather? <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> you right. know, I've, I've given Cyclops some um, some critique for being Captain Cringe over here. Uh -huh. You know, um but that that was a nice little one liner by Cyclops. I liked it. You know, a broke clock is twice twice oh is right twice a day. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> um but yeah I dude I, I, I mentioned earlier the Wolverine moment and I think it was this episode where he says something about like, you know, you you want to turn to a tin can or some shit or tin lady and then he dude he goes off right like he has his moment which is cool mm -hmm. um and because uh, again i've said this several times i felt like he was too and, and i'm not saying he needs to be the leader i don't want him to be cyclops right right or you know do all this stuff every episode exactly but i thought that was really cool to the the wolverine moment and, and i mean we've talked about the action scenes in this show you know since the beginning and we see that continue into this episode right right but the highlight for me was you know that dr cooper feels that magneto was right mm -hmm. and we say magneto was right right that we we're not going to be able to coexist right you know and, and that's kind of that's where him and xavier see differently mm -hmm. you know and, and and xavier doesn't even he's not even looking at it hey let's be treated equally he's like just let us be here right <laughs> magneto's like we're better than you number right. one but hey let us we want to be on the same page as you right right and that's where you know unfortunately a, a good percentage of the human population don't see eye to eye right right i mean it's the it's the the current dynamic still yeah. to this day you know um you know you got fear of people that you perceive as superior to you so mm -hmm. we're going to do everything to suppress whatever you are still whatever you 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 can accumulate yep. we're not going to get rid of you we're, we're just going to hold on to you we're going to get what we want out of you right you you're useful to us to the degree that we decided you're useful to us mm -hmm. but outside of that and eh, no right um and it was a cool scene in this episode when all of these prime sentinels started to activate all over the world because you get right. to see how many there are. Right. Even Bastion's mother. Uh huh. That was cool when they showed up to her house. <laughs> the, the most, the most um, interesting, and this is attention to detail in making a movie, including animation, mm -hmm. right? So when the what was the husband there at a baseball game or something? Yeah. And this family's at a baseball game. You got the mom, the husband, the mom, and the daughter or something, the kid, yeah. right? And then the husband transforms, and you can see the expression in the wife's face looking over, like, what, what, what's Right, right. Those are attention to details that yep. I like, you know, those little hidden gems, yeah. per se, there you, go. you know, in, in the Look making of the movie. So, yo, know, th those are cool scenes. Yeah. So, I mean, all in all, dude, I thought this was a great episode. It's got mm -hmm. me hyped for the next two. 
Um, you talked about the Magneto scene with the freaking underwear. Right. I mean, it was weird and cool at the same time, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, do you really, like, you didn't have a pair of pants somewhere? Like, right. You couldn't have used some made-up, like, a, some flexible metal, you right. know, aluminum foil kind of a suit to go up and also, out of space. And also, Bastion, why you got my man in his underwear? I, exactly. Like, what's up, what's with, up that? with that? We need well, some more. Well, because the blast blew away everything but the underwear. Oh, okay. You know, it's like when the Hulk transformed. Yes. Everything, everything. Blew, everything goes away except <laughs> the, the pants, right? Except enough of the pants to cover exactly. everything that needs to be covered. <laughs> it's funny, but. It's yeah. rated R, not rated X. Exactly. But, I mean, dude, they couldn't get them, like, a you know prisoner outfit or something. Something, something dude. Uh, a, um, a Jesus blanket. Yep. Something, you know, the whole toga. Now, I'm hoping, Adrian, this is not a prediction. This is a, um, a hope. Okay. Uh -huh. I hope that the next time we see Magneto in X Men '97, he's got his iconic maroon outfit on mm -hmm. with the helmet. Right. If, as I said, I predicted he was going to turn heel. You know, for uh, all our wrestling fans mm -hmm. out there, I think it's happening. I, 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 I hope your prediction is is, is true. Right. And you know, to be he who knows all or whatever your motto yeah. is this week. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this week. Um, you, you're probably right, and I, I also hope that you know that comes back too because that yep. that giant M dude, it just was not working. Dude, if we all. never see that giant M again, it right. would still be too soon. Right, do another episode in the skivvies yeah. before you bring that thing <laughs> back. You know. Yep, absolutely. Um, th I thought it was cool seeing seeing the EMP go around the whole right. world. You know, mm -hmm. um, so it, it's things that we talked about this before a lot here. Things you can do in animation that's hard to do on the right. big screen, you know, right. or from a but you, you need like Ant Man size budget to do it, right. you know. Um, right. But it's it's done. It was done very well. I'm interested. Um, it's interesting. Um, talking about like um, hidden gems inside of these these shows, right? Yeah. So Bastion can see anything that his Sentinels do, mm -hmm. right? So when Cable came through time and threw out that EM pulse bomb. That should have been. You ever see um, Star Trek, the um, the Borg? Uh -uh. Anything that happens to a, a Borg, because it's a hive mind. Yeah. Anything happens to the Borg. I mean, literally in real time, they start adapting. Like okay. They, they come out with a laser. They start shooting a, a Borg with a laser. It it might take down the first one or the second one, but then they they're automatically adapting their shields to the Got lasers. And stuff. Okay. So I'm surprised that Bastion didn't have doesn't didn't have that kind of thing going on mm -hmm. or maybe it just would have made this show a lot shorter if it did yeah where when um cable threw out that that em bomb bastion should have felt that or experienced right. that and then true adapted. true so then magneto's worldwide magnet uh, magnetic pulse should have had zero effect on yeah. everybody else I, he was too busy hiding magneto's clothes oh uh, that's he was, was distracted, you know, yeah. You know, shaving him with the with the knife. <laughs> yeah, and stuff. yeah. Actually, he was busy <laughs> shaving him at that point. <laughs> uh. um, but and then you know the episode ends with Wolverine basically stating that Magneto has declared war, uh -huh. and then Xavier shows up, you know, at the right time, right. his little spaceship, and you know he says he says the phrase, Adrian, the to me, <laughs> my X Men. Dude, there's been eight episodes, uh. and we've heard that phrase I think eighty three times. Dude, that that phrase now is like that that one in um, what's that movie? Um, it puts the lotion onto his skin. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just weird at this point, man. Yeah, it does. It. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I don't know if they say that more or they say the the word fuck more in the Wolf of Wall Street movie. I don't I, know which one. It's it's got to be up there. We do uh, a higher and lower on that one. <laughs> I I don't know, dude. It but, just it's just it's cringy at this. point. It is. Yep, it definitely is. So, um, but anyways, this is ha I'm hyped for the next two. I would give this episode, um, I'd say nine. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll go definitely um, a strong eight point five. Yeah. Only because again, they have to do some fillers mm -hmm. um, to to make the story make sense. Yep. So some things were like kind of stressed out a little bit, but it was cool. I so I definitely I, I give both. 8.5 average, you know, yeah. across both ep episodes. And and who knows? We may get that. Iconic fatal attraction scene with Wolverine, you know, being um being decimated by Magneto. I mean, Magneto's gonna. I think I don't think he's gonna stop with just this EMP bomb. He's gonna be pissed. Right, right. I I I don't see the well. If Charles comes in and then he puts the X Men against Magneto because he's gone off the off the charts. Yeah, I could probably see that that iconic um yep. scene, but. Magneto's focus really is something else at this point. So, I, but if they're I, I trying know. to stop, and I think in in the comic, what happened was they were trying to stop Magneto, 
and he basically was like, get out of my way or it's going to be bad, and they didn't. And it actually led to Xavier wiping Magneto's mind mm -hmm. after that. Um, and, and I forget what and, – and then that then led to Onslaught. You, you know anything about Onslaught? I've heard the name. It's – um. And I'll have to, we'll have to do a, a deep dive in it. I'm sure most of our viewers probably know. But mm -hmm. it, something to do with Magneto and Xavier's consciousness combined created this, like, massive villain that was okay. uh, uh, based a combination of the two. Yeah, I have. But it right. happened because, I believe it was because of him wiping his mind after the Fatal Attractions um, mm -hmm. incident. So we may be going that route. Who knows? I don't understand why Xavier, first, you know, his narcissistic ways he's got to come back right mm -hmm. uh, leave the, the the super hot alien chick right he's got to come back with his with his mantis helmet on i don't yep. know where that came from <laughs> uh, or why why it was even necessary. Yeah, why does he need that to fly <laughs> exactly um so he comes back with that crap why is he interfering with magneto want to get wanting to get rid of the sentinels and mm -hmm. at the very least because again he didn't start wiping out humans which right. he could have easily done yeah he started wiping out sentinels right and if if you got people flying around with their face all lit up with rockets coming out of their feet they're probably not humans anymore yeah so you know so but why is xavier getting in his way mm. he just they just blew up an entire island of mutants right right and you st I dude this pissed me off just thinking about it yeah so hey may maybe magneto was right you know right. well well I guess we'll find out in a couple we'll weeks. Um, but I, I, I do think that Magneto is going to have a completely different um, mindset next week. A couple reasons. One, after what just happened, but also yep. with Xavier coming back, the only reason Magneto was on the X-Men side in the first place was because he made a promise to Xavier. Right. Well, Xavier's back now. Mm -hmm. So that prom the, the promise was like, if you die, I'll take over. Right. Well, he's not dead. Yep. So Magneto, I think, is going to revert back to his old ways, and I, I think, I think we, I, if I'm a betting Dude, man, works for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping we see that scene. Yeah. You know, I'm hoping we see the adamantium rip from Wolverine, and <laughs> I mean, just do that would be so cool. Um, it'd be like that rogue scene with Captain America. Yeah. You, you, you want to sit over him and, and, and drive Gene? <laughs> yeah. So you don't need to, that ad exactly. adamantium anyway. Nah, let's just take it away from you. Exactly. Yep. Poof. Yep. Embedded in a mountain. <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> All right, so well, there you have it. Um, uh, X-Men 97, last two episodes. We will review episode nine next week. Yep. Um, we got a little agree to disagree, a little later than usual today. So I was holding this in my back pocket for you, Adrian. Right. Um, so I got a few here. All right, so number one, 2003 Daredevil was better than the Eternals. Um, Affleck? Yep. Yep, I agree. X-Men 97 should do their own version of X-Men vs. Avengers. Agree. 300 is better than the Matrix. Uh, <laughs> disagree. Patrick Stewart should retire from playing Professor Xavier. Patrick Stewart should retire. <laughs> Just stop at that. Just stop. Just do a, a Jack Nicholson. I'm done with movies. Yep, I, it's, it's getting ugly. Dude, I'm just, I'm tired of seeing um, Professor Xavier die. <laughs> It's up there with the, you know, the Martha and Thomas Wayne almost. Like, do we need to kill him that much? Well, they're actually doing like a weekend at Bernie's. He's yeah. already dead. <laughs> and they're just propping him up, you know. They, Dude, they, that's it, a great movie, by the way. It is. Weekend at Bernie's is a classic. Classic. Damn. Um, number see five. How, see how I just pulled that out? Yeah. You know, three, 30 years old? Dude. I, when I was a kid, I used to love that movie. Yeah. Um, number five. Magneto was right. Agree. Hope Summers would solo the Justice League. As an embryo. <laughs> Bastion would solo the Justice League. Um, yes, I agree. All right. And last but not least, um, Weekend at Bernie's is a better movie than The Eternals. Agree. <laughs> and there you have it. All right, that is Agree to Disagree. Now, where the real fun starts now is when our fans let us know if they agree or disagree. Sometimes they agree, sometimes they disagree. And then another thing that happens sometimes, Adrian, is they show up on We Respond. Okay. So what happens is we get a lot of um, interaction on YouTube. Like we get my man Mike Skix that says, I just became a fan. I found you guys on TikTok. Now I follow you on YouTube and watch all your videos. Thank you. Nice. nice. Yes. Everyone should do what Mike did, right? Everyone. <laughs> Be um, like Mike. Be like Mike Skix over here. Smoking Dragon 1 says, with movies like Madam Web and The Eternals, it, um, if it was better written, could it have been a better movie, or do you think the acting 
made it bad. I think it was all of the above for Madam Web. I, I think it's mostly the writing. Yeah. Um, you know, we've seen it early on, like in there of uh, Daredevil with Affleck. Um, um, I, I think it's the writing. I don't think it's the okay. acting per se. Um, they kind of come, it, it comes down to, like, like, uh, Chris Hemdale and, uh, uh, Thor Love and Thunder. Yeah. You know, they wrote into a movie that is not a comedy, mm -hmm. comedic thing. True, true. And it turns out to be horrific. Yeah. So I think it's the writing. I would say, well, Smoking Dragon is talking about two movies specifically, Madam Web and mm -hmm. Eternals. I would say for the Eternals, it's the writing. I think the acting was good in the Eternals. Yeah. For Madam Web, I think it was all the above. I I'll think go with, I'll go with that, yeah. some of that acting was, yeah. as you would call, crazy. Well, but but also they're trying to they're, they're skimming the surface of Spider Man. So that too. I think I think some of that came. Yeah, through. that didn't help. That's part of that, <laughs> part of the acting. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, <clears throat> Brasso Bray says, if I had two doors at the cinema, one night only, Deadpool in one door, Kingdom of the Ape, you know that new Planet yeah, of the Apes yeah. movie, I'm watching the Apes. Mm -hmm. like, Okay, <laughs> I'm good for you. I'm not what was, doing it. What was that. the point? Oh, yeah, exactly. That like I, um, that I never. We never asked that, and I would watch Deadpool over Planet of the Apes. I, I would watch both. Yeah, but, but if you had if you had a choice, there was only one door. He's saying, or two doors, one night only. Deadpool. 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 Absolutely. And then the Apes. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Anna Manga King says. Um, laughing my ass off. People's voices change with age, and and when they do, eating, smoking, drinking, and it's the original guy from '92. We're talking about the um, you know, the Wolverine voice actor. Right. So the reason I bring up his comment is not so much his comment, but more getting back to that statement that we had said early on, mm -hmm. not early on, a few weeks ago. I said that they should have recasted the voice. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I, know, I stand behind that. Even even the they changed the drawing, but they want they want to keep the original voices. <laughs> there you go. You know they they got they go through all these versions of uh, these superhero characters. All the actors change, mm -hmm. but you expect to, to have the same voice. Ah, come on, no, nah, no. Nah. You know, just recast the voices. Because right. That's what makes the anim animation animation, mm -hmm. right? Um, so recast the voice and not try to bring cringy voice exactly. into it. Now they think they did. They did with Jubilee was cool. Yes. You had an older version of Jubilee. Yes, they were really Oh, yeah, voice. you could have done that Wolverine. Absolutely. Right. But, yeah, I just, it doesn't, I don't, it's very uneven. There's times he sounds like the old Wolverine. Right. And there's times where he doesn't. Mm -hmm. And I understand that he's older, but there was a voice actor, Kevin Conroy, mm -hmm. who voiced Batman for 30-plus right. years. Right. And he always sounded like Batman. Y you knew instinctively. Yes. I mean, as soon as, it's like that guy that uh, did, like, the first, 300 years of um 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 that the stuff uh, the murders and stuff like that yeah. it's, it's this one guy i've had people tell me they go to sleep to this guy's oh voice. the narrative yeah, yeah um uh, un unsolved mysteries yep. unsolved murders or whatever that yep. guy i mean he did like a lot of them then they changed and people instantly knew mm -hmm. so yeah kevin conroy Iconic uh, yep. Batman voice. Mark Hamill's yep. Joker. Yep, yep. So he's done that for thirty plus. So yeah, you can't. Oh, he's just old, dude. He they should have got someone else. Right. Uh, the Cal Don was great back, in, but he ain't no Kevin Conroy. Right, right. No offense. It's, it's uh, probably the smoking. I, yeah, I <laughs> yeah, it's definitely that. <laughs> like, I mean, maybe Kevin Conroy smoked too. Who the hell knows? Uh, Mark Kozai, uh, Koz Kozaibra, Mark. K. Zyra, okay. Mark K, something like that, says Hawkman was awesome in Black Adam. Show some love to him. Hawkman. Did you like Hawkman in the Black Adam movie? No. You didn't? No, no, because they made him the typical angry black man. Got it. Okay. Um, I didn't like the first of all, I didn't like the switch off. Mm. Right. Because a lot of people don't understand his whole history, right? Yeah. They think he's some guy with mechanical wings, which he's not. Right. Um he's he's actually he was actually considered a god. He and Hawk Girl were con were considered gods. Got Even it. though Hawk Girl came from another planet. I mean, gets into the, all all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but yeah. No, I didn't like uh the portrayal of Hawk Man, mostly because they just made him an angry black man. Right. We got this user three nine something who couldn't come up with a username says just make it a Marvel podcast. It's weird at this point. What's weird? <laughs> <laughs> well, when DC start making stuff, <laughs> exactly anything, right? You know, actually, we do have one that's coming up. Mm. Um, you know, the uh, the show that we just saw over the weekend, the part. One. Oh yeah, yeah just yeah, yep, yeah, yep. so, so great segue. So, so user three something, I can't come up with a fucking username, <laughs> but I want to comment. You know, um, anyway, how about we'll give you a username? He who is wrong, um, that will be your username. He who is wrong. But anyways, you, you wow. texted me the other day about Justice League. What was it? Crisis on Infinite Earths right. or something like that. Right. There's there's a two-part movie. Right. 
which we talked about here months ago. Yep. Somehow it just, I mean, it. Maybe if DC stuff would hit our radar, like they right. could do a little more promo, they yeah. should get Bo de Mayo to help promote their shit. Exactly. Since they can't do it. Right? Yeah. Or the janitor to something, somebody <laughs> to do somebody. something, you know. I just happened to be, you know, flipping through, um, what was it? Um, Max, uh, right? Max. Yeah. And and saw it. I'm like, oh, okay, here we yeah. go. So you watched the first one? Yes. Yeah, was it good? Um, the context is good. It's very yeah. deep. Uh, I think they're trying to do like uh, an Infinity War kind of a thing. But, okay. But it, um, Crisis on Infinity Earth is old. Yeah. I mean, just like uh, Flashpoint. Yeah. It, it, all that stuff. I think stuff. it's older, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah. But uh, it's it's a very good storyline. It's very complex. Mm -hmm. uh, Flash is always the problem. Well, did you see that? He just said DC had a very good storyline. Yeah. I just there yeah. you go. Yeah. They they have very good storyline. It's the, the directors that mess mess it up because they're yep. trying to make their own version of Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman right. and everybody else, right? Yep. Just stick to the storyline. And there's plenty of good stories. Yeah. Um so part one came out and I'm I'm interested in see I don't like the I don't like the artwork though. Okay. It's like that um there's like an adult um animation on TV. Mm. It's like, it's like I, I, I wanna say like a Dick Tracy kind of art. Okay. I don't like that kind of art. Got it. Um it's kind of like a flat three D. That's the only way I can describe it. Okay. Um uh, but the storyline is cool. Um a lot going on. They mm. have multiple Earths. They have they have multiple universes yep. in, in there. So another so multiverse. Again, a yeah. lot going on. Um so watch that. But yeah, I mean DC we're not a Marvel show. It's just that DC isn't putting out anything. Right. And what they have put out lately has been shit. There you so, go. There you go. I mean, your hat's from DC, so exactly. there you go. I mean, um, I, mean I got this this right here, Batman. Right. He's from DC, yep. my favorite character. Um, King Dad Gam says, we were talking about the Oscars last week, right? Yep. He said, Infinity War and Endgame didn't win anything. That's crazy. I agree with that. That I is agree. insane. I agree. Because it, it hasn't bubbled up to... Some people are suppressing mm. the fact that these are mainstream movies. Right. You know, again, when you have, um, you know, these, these A-list actors... Even being talked about being in comic book movies, mm -hmm. it's it's a reckoning. It's happening. Right. So. Yep. Jackie Daytona 180 says Dazzler plus Taylor Swift equals perfect role. You yep. agree with that? I, I said that. Yes, you I did. Said <laughs> that she, I said that she would be the perfect role yep. for Dazzler. Absolutely. Mike and Ike 13 thinks he's funny. He says, who doesn't want to look at Halle Berry? Dude. If you want to look at Halle Berry, go online and look at Halle Berry. Like, I, I don't want to see her in the Storm costume again. Exactly. Like, I know what you're trying to look at, but no, no, I don't, actually. Not in this movie, I don't. It, beautiful women don't make make them good actors. Actresses, exactly. You know? Yep. Or, and in, in, in they most certainly don't make them um, comic book characters. Correct. It, there's zero correlation whatsoever. Yep. So, nope, you're wrong. Um, what else we got? A couple more up in here, Adrian. We got... Dun, dun. Nolan Smith. We were talking about the Dark Phoenix movie. Yep. You know that um, the train scene and then the beginning scene with the um, spaceship and all that. He says the start of that movie came directly from the X Men comic book. Yes, it did. And that and I think the biggest issue with the Dark Phoenix, not the biggest, there's a lot of them, but you had a great story in the comics. Right. It, that's one of those instances where they change things for the worse. Right. Right. Like sometimes it's okay to just stick to the comic. If you can't make it better, just use what you had. So comics, some comic books and characters have been around for 30, 40, 50 years. Yep. Right? There's a reason that they survived. You know, mm -hmm. um, there's a reason why you don't have a, you know, Thanksgiving man, you know, because people just. <laughs> Turkey man exactly. coming soon. <laughs> um, you, you wouldn't, it, people just wouldn't accept it. Mm -hmm. So if you just, so what I'm saying is the content of the comic books can make great movies if you don't change the context of the comic books. Book, right right yep. if you just make it a live action version of the page the flat pages on the comic book mm -hmm. i think you have a hit absolutely if you keep it grounded i think you have a hit yep. it's when you're trying to make it confusing and all these all these extra things that's when we kind of like move away from what the fans understand mm -hmm. and know and even the new people even the new uh comic book comic character adapters yep they're like this doesn't even make sense dude right so anyway um, my man Stu Franklin. Stu's been around for a while here, back from the Secret Invasion days of the okay. show. He says, I think it's time we do a thumbs up, thumbs down on the best of your hats. <laughs> Let me, I, I'll give you a spoiler, Stu. They're all thumbs up. Exactly. exactly. But if we did it today, I'd give my hat a thumbs up. Deadpool, sure, right? Sure, sure. And if we go to your hat, I'd give your hat a thumbs up, too. Yeah, yeah. Because it's not the Flash. It, it is not the Flash. It's um, Black Adam. Black Adam. And, um, I, matter of fact, I'm... I'm 
you know, because everybody shits on Black Adam movies, mm-hmm. I'm going to give it a thumbs up along with the hat. <laughs> there you go. Yes, we're going to give the Black Adam another thumbs up. If you, if you don't know by now, we like that movie. A um, couple more. We talked about top movies, you know, a few weeks back. My man, user something or another, says Superman. <laughs> I just, I can't with the... How hard is it? Just put your name, put your dog's name. I don't right, know. Something. Call yourself Iron Man or something. something. Call yourself I Love the Eternals if you want. I don't know. Uh, but he says Superman. No, nobody's going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Superman 1978 is number one for him. So okay. that's cool. Um, another guy, Jacob Stevens, says top three worst movies have to be 1996, The Phantom. Do you remember that movie? Oh, yeah. I remember that. With that guy who thought it was, he, he was so pretty, it's almost like he would stop and look at the camera to see his <laughs> yeah. reflection. Oh, that dude was just creepy. Yep. 97, Steel with Shaq. Remember that one? Oh, that was my a bad God. one. God, <laughs> yes. Yes, I remember that. That was horrible. It, that was bad. So, yeah, these are definitely, these are great honorable mentions. Right. And he says, oh, for Catwoman. And we definitely, we actually went back and said that right. we would swap that one out. Right. Hey, says his, thank uh, you for that list. Yes. That, that was cool. Now, Jacob also says his, his best three movies are Logan, Wonder Woman, mm-hmm. and The Dark Knight. I agree with that. Yeah, so, I, I mean. I agree with that. I'm surprised Wonder Woman's that high, but like you, you like you told me if you know a few weeks she ago, she is I can't. completely underrated, underrated yeah. dude. I'm yeah. telling you. But Dark Knight, I mean, I, I I I joke with you about that movie, but I love that movie, and Logan's one of my all time favorite. Yeah. Um, Boom Boy fifty three says, "Congrats on the one year. Thank you. Can't Thank wait you. for year two. Well, hey, you got to wait another like fifty weeks, bro. <laughs> um, <laughs> he says next year you got to do an official list of the top three worst comic TV shows. That's a good way we're gonna. I now think, there, I don't do think we need to wait a year for that? Yeah, we do. I mean, shit, Secret Invasion, She Hulk, but we do that next week, maybe. We do it next week, <laughs> right now? Isn't yeah, it? right. Yeah, it's not that hard. <laughs> but um, his top three comic movies: X Men: Days of Future Past, mm-hmm. great movie. Logan, okay. see that a lot, and yep. Avengers: Infinity War. Okay. So, um, cool. uh, Brett Johnson says, if you want to see a good movie with Lady Gaga acting, watch House of Gucci. Have you seen this? I have not, but that's why I I mm. saw I saw I saw I saw. Anyway, I saw you seen her. It. I seen her. I seen yeah. it. <laughs> I saw her. Um, just a trailer. Yeah. And just seeing her in the trailer is yes. why I was able. Because I've never seen her. I don't watch. I don't listen to her music. Yep. I don't. I didn't watch. Are you not the a gay Gaga fan? No. Huh? No. Nah. No. So, um, to me, she is like the now version of Marilyn Manson. Mm. Marilyn Monroe, um, you mean? No, Marilyn Manson. Manson. Really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I liked his music. Yeah, I, I heard it, but I don't go out, run out, and buy his stuff. Got it. But um, so just watching her portrayal in the trailer mm-hmm. is actually the reason why I said I think okay. that she will outshine uh, Joaquin Phoenix Got in um, the 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 Joker musical. Damn. Well, you heard it here first. We got two more. My man, Sun Shish, uh, Sushi. Oh, Sushi Shad. Okay, you like? I like Sushi too. Sushi yeah. Shad. Uh, we talk about Zack Snyder and his slow mo. He says the first <laughs> Rebel Moon movie had forty five minutes of slow mo, and it's a two hour and fourteen minute film. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe that, dude. Yeah. I I don't know if I, that's the thing. I don't know if he's joking or not, but that sounds accurate. It sounds right. I mean, I actually started to try to watch that movie again, Damn. and I couldn't get past the barn. Were you scene. having trouble sleeping or something? I I, I dude, I've seen I've, I've during for this show you consume so much content. Yeah. And it's like I need to watch something else right. if that makes any sense. Yep. Right? Oh yeah. Yep. So it's it's almost like you gotta eat Burger King to just mm. you know kind of get your body into a, like a fighting mode. Yeah. So that you can go and have the the good food. Right. Makes sense. We're not promoting body. Burger King though. You no, know, no, no. They're not a sponsor either. Dude, uh, I didn't see a box of Joe this morning. Did you? Uh, no. Nah, they're putting it like in a spot where we can't find it. Maybe. Um, it, it's in a pocket universe. Yeah. And we need Reed to come show us how to get to Dude, it. Dude, one of these days we're gonna open like some random door and there's gonna be fifty six boxes <laughs> of Joe in there. You know? All molded yes. over and shit. Yeah. We didn't get to it fast enough. <laughs> it's not them. It's us. <laughs> Last um, comment here, yo. My man is like a guest on the show almost, God Mode. God Mode 27. Okay. You've heard God Mode almost yes, every week, yes, bro. Yep. He's like one of the top commenters. Um, and he always asks some great questions. So he says, happy one year, fellas. Thank you. Thank you. He says, who is your trinity or favorite X-Men characters? And then he lists his trinity of X-Men characters, Wolverine, Deadpool, and Cable. So his top three X-Men characters. Really? Um, so now I, I did not think about this prior. I obviously Wolverine would be in there for me. All yeah. X-Men characters. Um, dude, who would the other two? Magneto would be one of mine. Because we're saying, I think he's, he's just. 
Is he is he talking about an X Men derivative or an actual X Men team member? Well, Deadpool's, Deadpool's not a team member. That's true. That's so true. I, I think I, I think he's talking X Men universe. Maybe. Okay. Okay. But let's also Magneto that. has led the X Men in the past, so that would fit either. Sure. Let's let's go with X Men affiliate. Okay. So I would go those two, and then God, who would my my third be? Dun, dun, and this is just off the cuff. Maybe Jean Grey, mm. Phoenix. Mm. I like uh, Gambit's a badass too. Yeah, I think I would go Wolverine, Magneto, Gambit. If you ask me today, who you I got? would go with Wolverine, um, and really, I mean, we shit on Scott a lot, mm. but I would go with the brothers. Okay, I, I love. Their power set. Uh, yeah. The brothers being uh, Scott and Scott and um, Alex. And uh, Alex. Havoc. Havoc. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I would go with those two. Yeah. Yeah. No. No flags thrown there, Adrian. I like nah. that. No. So, well, there you have it. God mode and God mode. Keep keep commenting, bro. You, you, you right. a lot of a lot of good suggestions on the show. Absolutely. You're like a unofficial guest of the show. You know, we don't know who you are, but you follow us on YouTube. And we appreciate it. Um, there you have it. Did a little wee response. So we'll be back next week. So maybe maybe you want to do worst comic shows next week? Sure. All right. Well, well, I'll send out a list and we will rank them. All right. we, we will come up. We'll come up with our worst. I think what do we do with the movies? Our bottom three. All right. And dude, that's still one. It was iconic. Um, thanks for that for writing in on that one. Still, oh man, that was horrible. Yeah, still. <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs> yep. Now this one, I think we're you know to the people that say we're a little Marvel bias. Oh, we're gonna shit on some Marvel shows next week. Oh, yeah. spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> so a little spoiler alert for y'all. <laughs> Um, but hey, if you guys have not already hit subscribe button, like, share this, let your friends know about it. it you know, I'm a big gift giver, so I mean, well, um, give your friend the gift of this show. You, you know. You um, also, if you have not already, check out OnlyComicsMerch.com. That's right. where I got the shirt, Adrian. Right, OnlyComicsMerch.com. Right. Yep. You know. You can also give the gift of merch. Exactly. You know? The great gift for anyone. I mean, Mother's Day is coming up. Hey. Whose mother would not want a red Only Comics shirt? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, I know I'm getting my wife for Mother's Day. What? <laughs> One of these. Only, only, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't, I'm not getting my wife for no. Mother's Day. <laughs> I don't think that would go over well, you know. <laughs> but anyway, well, that wraps up this week. We appreciate you guys joining us along for this ride through the multiverse of the comic book world. Um, we appreciate all the – and even – I mean, we respond. We have fun. Even the my, my man user who can't come up with a fucking name. We love you. We love you too, bro. You're still part of the show. It's like – it, we are like wow. the multiverse, right? right. So, anyways, Adrian, thanks for coming in. <laughs> oh, absolutely, man. It's been fun as always. Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's crazy. It's been a year already. I know, dude. Wow. And we're still going. We're still going. We're still going. Yep. Unlike uh, Dennis Rodman marriage. <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay, yep. <laughs> hey, it happens, it dude. Happens. Like, like Chris said, the first nine days are the hardest. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, um, that, that's a wrap on Only Comics. You know where to find us on that's YouTube, right. TikTok, and we'll see you next week. Appreciate you joining us. All right. Peace.